Snow or no snow? That's the million dollar question. Got asked by at least five teachers uh, just last hour. <laughs> no joke, seriously. I, I am ready to see some definitiveness with the models, and I think we're getting there, folks. And for you snow lovers, it may not be the best thing you want to hear, as there's a better chance at the coast seeing snow because the NAM model is now caving over to what the European has shown all along. The king continues to reign true on the co computer models. European just kind of stay in the course here with that dry look to it. Now, is it written? in stone? No. Could things certainly change back once we get into the HRR status? That's 48 hours out. We'll know a lot more into our Friday, <clears throat> and I would expect a better profile estimation from the NAM uh, 3K, which we have access to right here, and then the HRRR, which is the high resolution rapid refresh. <clears throat> it shows this cold front coming in uh, tomorrow night into Saturday. It's got a little bit of snow with it. This could actually be a sneaky little system for the mountains and maybe even provide for a little wintry mix in the northern part of the upstate tomorrow night into Saturday morning. That's as the cold air rushes in and with us on Saturday morning, maybe a few spotty sprinkles uh, through about 10, 11 o'clock. And then after that, <clears throat> it's pretty steady throughout the day. But then when the sun goes down Saturday is when the cold air gets here. And this is when things were starting to crank up on our other models. But you see here, crickets. There's just nothing. You have the NAM 3K coming in like its other counterparts. Dry it is getting us dry here at the surface. This is all upper level driven. It's got a little bit of snow trying to mix in here toward the end of its model. Now it's less high resolution uh, uh, model version, the 12K. Let me go to that one. It uh, goes out a little bit further, but it's less resolution as we map that one out. It does have a little wintry mix in the upstate. <clears throat> this would be 4 a.m. Here's 7 a.m. And here is 10 a.m. So the moisture's diving in on the, the east side of a dip in the, the jet stream, the trough there. And what's happening here is it's changing that over to a little bit of, of a wintry mix or wet snow. This would be through 8, 9, 10 o'clock in the, in the morning there. By 1 o'clock on this NAM 12K, uh, it shows snow in South Georgia. And then it kind of retreats back to North Carolina where we get a quick hit there. That would show some accumulation, but I tell you, when you look at the trends, it has certainly gone down. But for you snow lovers, there's not all hope gone. But uh, the teachers were like, all right, just get, give it to me real. Ma make a call. It's been really hard to make a definitive call on this one because there's been such a difference in the models. When you look at the overall average of the models, which I like to do looking at the ensembles or national blend, they've been relatively consistent at, at this, about a, a half an inch to, to a, an inch on the max end. Uh, but when you look at the new European, the new GFS, they're very, very, very limited in the amount of moisture that they have streaming in. This is the midday run of the GFS. Shows a half an inch or less across South Carolina and North Carolina. You have to get up northeast of the triad up toward Norfolk to see any kind of measurable snow on the GFS. The European has completely removed really snow mention at all. Um, the midday run shows a little bit here across South Georgia where there's kind of that little glancing blow from the moisture uh, that rides on in. But is that the only threat that we have? No, we still have a very active pattern moving in with the fact that we're still so cold. In fact, this co pattern going into MLK weekend is in fact rivaling what we had today with highs in the 30s and then into next week we've got a couple of systems to watch here remember that 23rd through 26th system i'm telling you about it does look like it could be a little snow or ice on the european model uh for parts of tennessee north carolina into virginia so we're not done with threats by any stretch of the imagination in fact it looks like we stay very cold going into the thursday friday time frame here uh into next week so uh, that's kind of the the overall pattern as it sits right now but the gfs here showing a little bit of snow right there trying to mix in 4 a.m there's 7 a.m there's 10 a.m and it moves on out so it does have a little bit of snow accumulation on the gfs model if we look at that uh, ratio there you see it uh, it has trended and caved the last few runs there's the 6z run a little bit optimistic last night Here's the 12Z run and then the 18Z run. Just kind of progressively dried out as the day went on, uh, kind of limiting that moisture transport back into the area. Here's the earlier run of the European model from yesterday. It was a bit aggressive coming in here, but it too trended drier and drier with each subsequent model. Uh, the 12Z had a little bit more moisture on 
that run. And then the 0Z from last night kind of started that trend on the European. You kind of woke up to a different type forecast. So a good way to look at this is just average together all of them. Of course, you're going to have the outliers like the, the four and a half inch one that the GFS showed earlier. You're also going to have the outliers like the Canadian that shows zero, zero snow at all and you're going to get somewhere in the middle here so if we advance this out you're still going to get a little bit peppered in here uh, but it's not a lot this is not a high impact system could you see it flying around on this national blend yes and it would show really a a, a look here from uh, south georgia up through columbia into parts of charlotte uh, would have a slightly better chance than the 0.1 inch which is, is is basically nothing on an average like that for the upstate. So the trends have definitely not been in favor as the average yesterday went from that to this on the GFS. I guess this is the 23rd storm, which does show up on the model here on the GFS uh, ensembles. But if you look closer at uh, the different snow forecasts uh, for GSP in particular, here's the GSP GFS forecast. Here's the 18Z run, one, two, three, four, five, Yikes, that trend was really bad for GSP on the GFS. Five out of 30 showed the snow. And then when you look closer at the European model one, let's look closer at that one. The 18Z had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten out of 50. Not great odds. And all of them are 0 0.3, 0 0.4 or less. But look at the trend here. Four runs ago. G European's been pretty consistent, but there at least was, was some signals there from this morning even had some signals, uh, at least a little bit. The average was pretty low. It does have some back in there through that, but the 18Z run just got really, really paltry as the atmosphere being sampled uh, came in quite a bit drier. Now remember, the North Atlantic Oscillation does have uh, a negative tilt toward it, really toward the end of the month, which could indicate that the, the blocking patterns in the upper parts of the atmosphere disrupt the polar vortex and sends it farther south, which would mean that we'd end up with a better chance for um, more impactful cold uh, at times, as you have already seen, uh, as it is just brutally cold outside right now. Here's the GFS's ensemble run at uh, averaging them all together here through this weekend. Got a little bit here across South Georgia, but it, it really dried up. How about the European ensemble? A little bit higher across South Georgia. Pooler, my friends, my family, uh, Beaufort, Hilton Head, Savannah would have a better chance than the upstate on this European model. The European AI says no snow for anybody. I mean, European AI has just been stubbornly dry on almost all of them. But here's the deal, folks. As we get toward the end of January, these, of course, those chances do always go back up just because of, of climatology. It's supposed to snow. It is supposed to snow here in wintertime, right? We're supposed to get it. Uh, but the the takeaway here is that once we get into the wheelhouse of 48 hours out, um, we're going to know a lot more tomorrow morning when that first run of the uh, HRRR comes in um, around 8 o'clock. We'll be able to see 48 hours out. Is the atmosphere as dry as the Euro and the GFS are showing it? Or is it a little bit more uh, dynamic, which the answer probably lies somewhere in the middle. Um, <clears throat> so a lot to untrack here, folks, or unpack here, folks. And I, I can understand that when you're tracking winter weather like this, the changes in the information comes in so fast and so many times that you're like, wait, windshield wiper over here over here. And my goal is to never flip, flop, bap, and forth. That's why I've, I've never really truly made a call on this one. And, and I don't like doing that either. It might do this. It might do that. I'd, I'd rather tell you, hey, I, I'm, I'm thinking it's probably not, or I think it probably is. But honestly, the models have been so back and forth that, that there wasn't a real way to do it. So um, I hope that you're able to stay tuned to this. I hope that you'll check back in with uh, the possibility of it tomorrow. And of course, we'll keep you posted around the clock here as winter is certainly uh, never giving us a dull moment here, is what I like to say. Hope you guys have a great day and we'll talk soon.